and welcome to the Just Call It Podcast, hosted by William Murillo, an SF Bay Area native. Please like and subscribe. And welcome, everybody, to the best podcast in the motherfucking world. Doesn't matter how many people download this podcast, it's a secret gem sitting in your cell phone. It's like a podcast with a secret message. I might as well call this podcast nothing because it is unknown brilliance you know what I'm saying it's like knowledge trapped in a in a diamond ain't gonna get it it's unattainable but it's it's right there in front of you it's crazy I wanted to do this podcast today because uh, I was looking at my stats Saw that uh, I got 17 downloads last night. I wanted to talk a little bit about downloads, okay? Now, I've been doing my podcast for a couple of years now, maybe about three or four. And, you know, I'm slow. I I don't have a podcast every week. Now, if I did have a podcast every week, I would like for you guys to go on YouTube, type in Just Call It Podcast, Go to any of my videos and leave a comment. Tell me that you want me to put a podcast every week if you want me to. I don't care. But just let me know. You can go now on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Go to the notes of the podcast and click on the link. You can actually send me a personal message. So go do that right now. If you want me to do the podcast every week, I will do it. But I do it on my own time when I feel like doing it. So I put a podcast every so often. Okay, I don't do it every day. I don't I don't do it like most people like Joe Rogan or or Kill Tony or any other people. I'm just not that famous. And honestly, to be honest, even if I did put a podcast out every day, not that many people listen, so it kind of sucks. So there's no point for wasted effort. I got to find the right ratio where people still, you know, click it. And then there's people, you know, still going to listen. You know what I'm saying? So the download thing, you know, I get downloads from like all over the world, bro. I get downloads like from everywhere. <clears throat> I mean, I get downloads from India, from New Zealand, from Australia, from Israel, from Russia. I get downloads from Brazil, from Luxembourg, Norway, Morocco, Greece, Singapore, Denmark, Netherlands, Spain, Guatemala, the Russian Federation, South Africa, Van Natu. I don't even know where the hell that's at. Zambia. Italy and Uruguay, bro. I get pod, pod, podcast downloads from all over the world, man. You know? And to be honest, my second most downloaded city in my podcast ever is Frankfurt am Main, Hesse, Germany, bro. Isn't that crazy? The second most downloaded area. Of my podcast is not just like San Leandro, which I think most of those downloads are mine. It's Germany. So let me talk about <laughs> let me talk about the downloads for a second. Okay. I got downloads from a lot of different places all over the world, okay? And I've always wondered, like who the fuck are these people? You know, are these robots? Are these people using VPNs so they don't get noticed where they're listening to downloads from, which I don't I don't understand, right? Or, or 
you know, or is like some guy or some chick listening to my podcast and like gathering information to like scam me slowly, you know, am I getting just listened to so people can like, there's some weird scams going out there for podcasting or, or, or is someone listening to my podcast like secretly? It's just crazy. Like who? Or, or or just random people listening to my podcast, they want to learn English, or they want to, like, I don't know, scam me or some shit. I don't know. You know? It's crazy. Like, the places that I see download my stuff. But, I'm going to stay hopeful. And just, you know, cross my fingers that this is all good. That the people listening to my podcast, you guys are good folks. And, uh, you know, whatever. But I do want to thank, thank Frankfurt, Maine, um, Maine, Hesse, Germany. Thank you guys very much. Uber Alice. You know, thank you so much for the downloads. I see the downloads every single freaking day. I don't care if I'm not putting on an episode. I always check my Buzzsprout app. If you guys want to do a podcast... Go to Buzzsprout.com. You can learn very easily how to make your own podcast, how to upload uh, audio, how to, you know, put the things in. You can even get a lot of upgrades for your podcast to even be more um, professional, you know, and all that stuff. So I definitely recommend that. Um, But yeah, you know, I check it every day. So thank you guys so much for the downloads. Now... I got 17 downloads in one day last night. I don't know if this person was downloading it, uh, just, you know, just literally watching it for a second and just saying this episode sucks. And they went through 17 episodes of my podcast and they found out that it sucked. But I do want to thank, uh, uh, you know, I see everything, bro. I want to thank uh, Ashburn, Virginia. Personally, thank you guys so much. For downloading my podcast, I absolutely don't know who do not know who you are. But if you want to, you know, say hello, put any comments on the podcast, go to the podcast notes, click on the link that says if you want to leave me a personal note, I want to hear from you. Click on that, send me a text message. It's totally anonymous. You can also send, a, you know, leave a comment on YouTube, bro. Leave a comment on YouTube. Tell me how you've been, what you think about the podcast. You know, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much for uh, listening to the podcast, everybody. Um, It inspires me to wake up and see a new download. I don't care if it's one every day. Thank you guys so much. My goal is to eventually hit that uh, those 2,500 podcast downloads after, I don't know, after three years of podcasting. Um since October 16th, baby, we're doing podcasts a little bit before that, only putting it on YouTube. If you guys want to see the first couple first episodes we made that is not on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can actually go to YouTube and go look at those, hear those videos uh, on YouTube. But yeah, man, it's, I've been doing great. It's been a while since our last episode. You know, it's been uh, literally almost one whole month. great man thank you guys for again listening to the podcast so yeah i've been good man last podcast since may 7th you know i had to pause the podcast sorry about that i say bye to the wifey real quick um you know it's uh been a good podcast you know it's been good you know uh going out there doing my thing living life you know life has been good man um Mentally, you know, spiritually. And I've been having some weird back problems, man. I fucked up my L5 S1. I found out from my doctor that supposedly I have some degenerative disc problems. The very last jelly donut in between the pelvis. Um, and living, le- leaning to that S1 nerve. So I guess the pelvis... 
you know, looks like the pelvis, but it has like six holes or uh, four holes, two on each side that go uh, right alongside the the center of the pelvis. So imagine the center of the pelvis, there's two holes, not at the center, but kind of alongside of it. All right. And then you have your vertebrae, which you have your lumbar, which is the first five disc. So it goes from, or yeah, and then it goes from L5, L4, L3, L2, L1. And then it goes to your thoracic lumbar disc, right? Which are a little bit smaller than your lumbars because your lumbars are more thicker because that's where most of your, you know, your uh, lumbar support, your, your, your center structure comes from, you know, that core strength, right? And then your thoracic. And then you got your upper uh, parts, which I don't really remember what the hell those are called. But back to the pelvis. So you have those four holes, right? So each one of those holes represent either S1, S2, S3, or S4, okay? And those holes... If, you know, you look at it, just a general skeleton, you'll see the holes. Now, if you put the nerves on top of your body, you have, you know, thousands of nerves, right? All over your body. And tons of them go through your spine. And also, right through those holes in the pelvis. And so, those kind of link to things of, like, you know, having really pinched nerves because your degenerative disc... The jelly donut basically is is losing its, I guess, its strength. And so every time you bend in a certain position, the jelly donut pinches out a little bit. That's a hurry. That's kind of like herniated disc, herniated jelly donut, right? And then there's also kind of like a degenerative one where the disc kind of just pinches. It allows the bone to go too low where it pinches the nerve a little bit. And that nerve may be connected to your pelvis, obviously, because it's so fucking close. And then it sends a kind of a numbing sensation to your S1 nerve, making you feel a lot of pain every time you bend down, you move around, you know, the next day, right? For me, you know, I, I, I normally used to do a lot of installations of furniture and shit. So every time you have to lift a lot of furniture, you have to lift things in awkward positions. You got to lay down. You got to do a lot of weird sh- things. It's very awkward stuff. So, you know, furniture guys are strong, man. You know, you think furniture guys ain't strong. We're fucking strong, bro. Like, that's all we do every day is lift awkward shit every single goddamn day. So... I did that for many years, man, and that shit fucked up my back because I was stupid, stupid to be like, hey, you know what? Let me fuck up my back. You know, let me lift this heavy shit as a young kid. Let me prove to these guys that I got the strength of a hundred men. And, uh, you know, I paid for it, to be honest. And I think I did other things in my back to fuck it up, like lifting weights which, you know, I when I go into the gym, I'm like Brendan Schaub, dude. I have no form, you know. I'm ready. I'm ready to go, dude. I want to lift that shit up. I don't care, you know, whatever it takes. So I fucked up my back many ways to the point where I had to literally look like the letter L upside down one time. You know, not like I was bent forward, bro. I was le- bent to the side. I looked like... Michael Jackson and Thriller, but imagine when he did the shoulder thing on one side, he got stuck, bro. That was me. I was like, my back was literally screwed up. I had to stand that way for a couple of days. It was crazy. I couldn't even fucking, like, move around, you know? So it's weird for people to see a young guy say the hell my back hurts, because older guys are like, my back hurts all the fucking time. Like, no shit. It's called morning stiffness, you fuck. But my shit's like the next day or the next two days. You know, I play a game of basketball with my bros. Boom. You know, the next two days. Fucked up. Right? Like, just can't really walk. Not not can't really walk, but I feel a pain in my back. So it makes it really uncomfortable to lay down, to sit down, or to stand up. So I have to keep doing those three 
inter, 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 intermingling them, you know what I'm saying? So having fucking back problems suck, dude. I will tell people right then and now, do not fucking lift max, ever. Unless you have a competition, or you gotta, you gotta kick someone's ass, or this is death defying shit, like you gotta lift a car over somebody, that's the only time I would literally tell you, go 100% or 1000%. If you're ever in the gym, and if you're ever at work, and there's a time where you have to lift more than 95% of your max, don't fucking do it and I, I can't stress that enough you can still get muscle and strength lifting at 80 percent that's it we all know that you can bench fucking 320 but don't do it you don't need to this is why every time you lift at max or you're trying to do something at max potential you are risking the possibility of destroying something in your body that's old, that's doing all right. As we get older, the parts in our body are not, you know, full warranty. You know what I'm saying? They're not, you know, it's not fresh off the parking lot. You know, when I was a kid, dude, I used to fall off fucking slides from the top and like land on the side of my pelvis on the side of the slide going down because I've just been stupid kids you know just jumping from the top to the bottom and I just fucking land on the side of my on my hip because I wanted to jump onto the bottom of the slide from the top you know what I'm saying I just fucking miscalculated landing on my hip like I was a fucking stunt man you know and you get up the next day it hurts but you don't you know, pay attention to what the fuck you did to yourself you know you're a kid you're young and lumber you know limber I mean you know You're ready to do anything, right? So, like, I mean, it's like, you know, say you're a kid, you're running around everywhere, right? You're jumping, I skateboarded, I did everything, I I did baseball, I was very, very active. No matter, if you're a very active kid, you're using up your fucking joints, bro. You're using up every fucking part of your body faster than you should, because you're extremely fucking active, Especially as a teen, how many times have kids broke their ankles, right? Sprained them. Oh, man, I can't tell you how many times I've sprained my ankle as a kid playing baseball, basketball, especially skateboarding. Fucking, I, even when I was in Muay Thai uh, during my uh, t- uh, 20, young, early 20s, I fucking sprained my ankle so bad it got stuck in that position for a bit, bro. Like, that's what I mean about when you go 100%, there's no reason for it. Because 100% should only be needed for, like, completely necessary things. So you have to think like a trainer. You have to think like a fighter. You have to think like someone of longevity. This is what I'm going to tell you. If you're a fighter and you're getting prepared for a fight, you can never go 100%. Because you're risking the possibility of injury. Injury prevents you from fighting. And if you have a potential fight coming up and you get injured, you lose. You completely have to quit. Because if you, no one, you're not able to fight under injury. Nobody wants you to. Right? A lot of fighters do, though. You know, they probably fight with a lot of problems in their back or, you know, with their arms. And they do that all the fucking time. But what I'm saying is, is that you cannot assume doing 100% and, and, and boxing and, and whatever you do, lifting weights, especially at work when you're lifting, you can't assume that 100% effort is going to make you, um, especially if you, let's say, you, oh, I didn't get hurt that time. No, dude, 100% means you're using your joints and body at 100%. You know, there's things that your organs do when you're you're using your muscles at a hundred percent. They shut down. You know, there's things that your body does when you're not nutrished, nu- nourished properly, and you go to the gym. You're actually not getting any muscle. 
you're working under complete stress hormones and your body actually is having this flight or fight response and you actually have no clue that that's happening. So you're working under these hormonal stress things. So that's all I mean. You cannot work under pressure if you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not training, you're an ordinary guy, you're just going to the gym, no reason to go 100%. You know what I'm saying? You're at work and you got to lift some shit and you're going to need help, ask for the fucking help because there's no reason to do that. You're, you're not like, you're not, you don't have nothing to prove to anybody and you can get hurt doing something stupid and you may think that oh you know what i was dumb i fucked up my back not a big deal life will go on it will heal and i'll move no my friend you might have fucked it up to a point where in the future that's the thing you fucked up yourself now that you may think i'm healthy enough to keep moving forward no you did something to yourself now that you're gonna pay for in 20 to 30 years that's what happens to you so as I get older, I start to realize that there's certain things I can't do with my ankles like I used to do. There's certain things I can't do with my back I can't, like I used to do. Even when it was, like, injured, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean. I can't stress enough how much I've learned from fucking up. Like, that one little bit of news, could I could be like, you know what? I'm still young. And then, you know, I talk to people about this back problem. They say, oh, I've had that before. It's not a big deal. What the fuck are you talking about? You only get one back. Have you seen old people lately? Like, have you gone to Mexico and seen old dudes walk? They can't walk. Their backs are so fucked up. You know what I'm saying? You have to be extremely smart because... Do you want to walk with the cane 20 years prior before you die? You know what I'm saying? You have to take care of yourself. And, and, you know, not just physically, right? I mean, there's so many things that we do that internally go into our bodies, like smoking, drinking. I mean, that's a whole nother story. And I think that's, like, even harder because it's, it's just, it's, it's undistinguishable whether or not you're suffering, you know? You can't. You can physically see your bones and feel your bones every day, like, diminishing, but you can't feel your lungs blackening, you know? You can't feel your liver uh, getting bloated from too much alcohol, you know, or getting uh, infected. Like, you can't uh, tell if you have cancer in your brain or on your arms, right? Like, you can't fucking tell unless you can feel it, you know what I'm saying? Or, Or feel, you know, feel it somehow with your hands or your body, like something's fucking wrong with you, and it might be too late by then, so, sorry for the spiel, but still, I still highly recommend for everyone to please watch it back, bro, watch it back, now, you know, I've been thinking about the podcast, about how the things that I talk about, I talk about daily stuff, and you know, I, I actually like to watch a lot of YouTube, man. I'm a, I'm a big YouTube fan. I just, I just like to watch it. It's just so fun and entertaining. I like bite-sized stuff. I like long, con- long form content. You know, I'm, I said long, pause, yo, pause, whoa. You know what I'm saying? You know, I like, you know, and, and one of the podcasts I really like, I love watching mafia, narco, gangster, documentary shit, you know, biker gangs. Like, I love Vice lately. I've been list- watching a lot of Vice if you guys like Vice, um, the the TV show um, used to just be documentaries. I highly recommend these two shows, United Gangs of America. It's a fucking great show so far. It's three episodes. They talked about uh, MS-13 women, the women of MS-13 who actually... So MS-13, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not... I'm just talking about documentary shit. I'm not talking shit about MS-13. They can do whatever they want. Uh, I have no... You know, that's their life, bro. You know, I'm I'm actually have blood, you know, I have blood family from El Salvador. That's you know, I have family that have better from there, even though I'm also Nicaraguan. You know, my my and that some of my family is even Mexican, you know. I have so much and I have more Mexican knowledge of life and I've been in Mexico more, but I've never been in El Salvador, never been in Nicaragua. Always wanted to go though, because it's 
said to be a beautiful place, but you know, El Salvador has gone through a lot of shit. And you know, if you watch lately what's going on in the politics in El Salvador, you know, you got a new young president who's making Bitcoin relatively really accessible and and, and kind of like a, a hub of that place and a way of, of actually currency. People can use currency for Bitcoin just relatively easy over there. And then also, you know, you have a total reform of MS-13 going on over there where, you know, they're building prisons, these supermax prisons and treating these MS-13 members and, you know, 18th Street gangsters like completely um, like like nothing, you know, and like they have always had. And but they no longer are controlling the prisons. That was the thing back then where the gangs would control the prisons from within inside few prisons are still like that, but those super max prisons that they're building now, no longer giving that uh, um, power to the prisoners there to be able to control from control the streets from the inside. They're, they're just so uh, imprisoned, like it's impossible for them to really like gain some foot footing there and become the person that they are, right? But, you know, I've been watching the Johnny Mitchell, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, Vice, you know, Vice, that that's a really good show. They got a new show coming out, um, which just has one episode so far. And it's about it's kingdom, kingdom come hell's angels. I think that's what it's called. It's basically a show just about the history of the hell's angels. And that's a really good show, too. You know, it's crazy how, how good those shows are. Um. I love them. You know, I love those shows. I love learning about that shit, man. And uh, I like watching. um, Oh, yeah. And then then about the MS-13 thing. Oh, yeah. They, you know, MS-13 is one of the few gangs that really allow women in America. I guess in in El Salvador, women are not allowed to join the gang. I don't really know how that works because then they get deported back and then they're over there. So I don't know. They're not. I don't know. And then, but. In America, you got, you know, women are allowed to join the gang and then they have a lot of power, dude, because, you know, deceitfulness is a big thing. You know, men want to obviously date women and, and some of these women are gangsters. They they lure them them in and they fucking kill them, bro. You know, there's a lot of stories in the United States about that, you know, and, and it's fucking crazy, dude. Like, it's a crazy, crazy gang, bro. And then, you know, hearing the stories of how they first started, that they were just stoners sitting in front of the 7-Eleven, bro. And then all of a sudden, they became this super incredible gang that started originally from America. It didn't start in El Salvador. You know what I'm saying? So it's a very interesting, interesting um, uh, thing. Especially the other gangs that are from El Salvador that are also just as equally as big. Um... And just really all over Central America, right? And I've always wondered about Nicaragua because you know I'm, I got family there. You know I got I got that's my blood, right? I'm like seventy five percent Nicaraguan. How is it that uh, you know there's not really any gangs in the Nicaragua? You know, from what I see, I and like every time I research anything about Nicaragua, like nothing comes up. I don't know if it's like a an American government thing that they don't want type of information to be out about Nicaragua because Nicaragua is kind of like a dictatorship a little bit <clears throat> you know there's plenty but there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about Nicaragua like a lot about you know the Contra scandal I ran a Contra scandal with you know America and then you know the Sandinista revolution and a whole bunch of other random ass things about Nicaragua but Nothing about gangs or mafias or cartels there, you know, like they, that's just like erased. Like it for some reason stopped when, you know, they got caught, you know, the Iran contra, contra scandal and the CIA eventually got caught for getting involved and in, 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 in the Nicaraguans taking in cocaine and, and, and transporting it for the Colombians over to the U.S. Like, how is it possible that Nicaragua has no gangs on YouTube to talk about? You know, the only thing in Nicaragua that they talk about is like, uh, like, um, just, just, uh, 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 like people protesting. Like, that's all they talk about. You know, I'm, how is it that there's, 
Central America, one of the most like craziest gang places in the world. Right next door is MS-13, and there's no MS-13 in Nicaragua. Like, what? Like, I highly doubt that. So I think sometimes information is withheld, but it is what it is. I always like to watch. I also like to watch another really badass podcast um, by Johnny Mitchell. He was a former drug dealer turned comedian podcaster. His YouTube show is called The Connect. It's a fucking great podcast. He recently just had a guy on who talked about the O.J. Simpson having an accomplice, an Italian mob member, some guy like that, connected, killing his wife and friend, uh, saying that basically O.J. didn't do it on his own. And that O.J. actually obviously did do it, that a lot of the evidence uh, made it seem like O.J. did it on his own, but really they couldn't show the evidence that there was an accomplice. And if there was, obviously it could have leaned on the accomplice and got them to admit that O.J. was obviously there. And, you know, O.J. died, so there's a lot of stuff coming out about that. And, obvi- and you know, another part of the co- the podcast that I saw with that person who linked that leaked that stuff on O.J. Simpson was that um, Kurt Cobain actually wasn't suicide. It was a fucking murder. You know, and Macaulay Culkin's sister was there as a witness, bro. And that stuff actually has came out. And it's pretty crazy, dude. Um, I didn't know that. So I was like, wow. Makes you kind of wonder, you know. Like the gun that Kurt Cobain had was fucking huge. And I guess that guns at some point were made like five inches longer so that not even a person's foot can touch or fit into the trigger to push it back and shoot while you have the barrel in your mouth so i didn't know that and you know it's an actual like thing that they made so it's like it's almost impossible for a human to do that so uh, it's pretty crazy Thank you for checking out the Just Call It podcast. Please remember to like and subscribe. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere else you get podcasts. You could even say it in your Alexa. Hey, Alexa, play Just Call It podcast. There you go. Thank you, everybody, and good night. And buenas noches. Buenos dias.